Welcome to Blazor Two-Way Data Binding. I'm Ed Charbonneau, Developer Advocate for Progress and Microsoft MVP. Over the next few minutes, we'll be learning about two-way data binding. Through this process, we'll get an understanding of how the bind directive is used and when to use the value and event directives. For the demo, we'll build a simple bidirectional conversion tool that updates in real time. Let's begin with a simple component. This component has two HTML inputs that are displaying a preset value. These are our default values for inch and centimeter. We'll extend these HTML inputs to use two-way data binding in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at how our application currently works. Currently, our component shows two input boxes with their default values. If we change a value on either of the input boxes, neither inches or centimeters is affected. Let's see how we can improve the component to make it more interactive. Before we begin with data binding, let's add a few properties to help us with the business logic of the conversion tool. First, we'll add a property for inches that returns the backing field of inches. When we set the property, we'll convert centimeters into inches using a simple conversion by multiplying by 2.54. We'll repeat the same process for converting centimeters back into inches. We'll create a getter that returns centimeters and a setter that performs conversion. This will give us two simple properties that we can use for data binding that also have the business logic included. This is a simple MVVM or model view view model pattern. We still haven't made any significant changes to our component yet, so let's scroll up and add some two-way data binding. We'll need to replace the static value binding with the bind directive. The bind directive will give us our two-way data binding. When we bind the value, this time we'll use the property that also contains our business logic for the conversion. We'll do the same for the centimeters property. Now we can rerun the application and see how two-way data binding has affected our component. Let's enter some data into our input field and see what happens. When we type in the box, the value of centimeters doesn't change. We need to navigate away from the text box and cause it to lose focus before the data binding occurs. This is because the default behavior of data binding happens on the onChange event. The onChange event only happens when focus is lost. Let's go back to the application and correct this problem using the event directive. To set the event that we'd like to use as a trigger for data binding, we can use the bind-value event directive. We'll also need to specify the event that we'd like to bind with. To trigger a change when the user types, we'll use the onInput event. Notice when we enter the event name, we receive an error in the editor. Since components can have multiple properties, the error is instructing us to specify which value we would like to bind to. In this case, we're binding to the value property of the input, so we'll change our bind directive to bind-value, where value matches the property name that we're binding to. We'll make the same changes to the centimeters input box, so we have data binding in both directions when we type in either box. This time when we run the application, each keystroke causes an on-input event to fire. This triggers data binding on both text boxes, and they update as we type. In this video, we learned about two-way data binding, the bind directive, and the bind event directive. If you're finding the videos helpful, please give us a like on YouTube, follow us, and let us know in the comments below on what videos you'd like to see us do next.